listening to the world's famous The Boxing Truth Radio YouTube edition. Welcome back to The Boxing Truth Radio. I am Ricardo along with John. As always, you know, there's something going on in boxing to have the fan up in arms. So why don't you just give fight fans the fight they want to see? I don't feel like he's done anything to deserve it, especially with the hand wrap scandal. Let's get to last week's action. If you want to chime in, 562-219-3603. He seemed to make some mocking gestures after his fight to the camera that, you know, his wraps were completely clean or whatever. This is bullshit. You don't want to give a good fight to the fans. And I love that we can say that on the Boxing Truth, because we're not on some big website like Boxing Scene or Fight News, and we don't have to worry about, you know, pissing off promoters. But screw you, I don't want a credential. Did it not allow us to run an effective program? I think absolutely not, given the time that we had and the number of tests that we did in a short period of time, and the breadth of the analysis. I mean, I mentioned right off the top of this, of when I joined the show, about EPO testing and CIR testing and HGH testing, and the parameter testing, which looks at the full body's system and, and various markers in that system, that we were comfortable doing it. In an ideal situation, we have more time and we were comfortable engaging uh, this program for the first time for these boxers. This is the Boxing Truth Radio here with Travis Tigard, the CEO of the United States Anti-Doping Agency. We're boxing fans. We have, you know, an audience of boxing fans. So this is a question that's running through my mind and in many fans' minds. Let's say Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight in November of this year and they agree, both of them, to some sort of drug testing under the auspices of the U.S. Anti-Drug, uh, Anti-Doping Agency, I should say. Now, we know that these negotiations between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao started in November, December of 2000. Nine, would nearly a, a year's amount of time allow Manny Pacquiao to clear any drugs out of his system? And, and the same with Floyd Mayweather. Would, it, would a year's uh, worth of time allow them to clear any drug traces out of their system? Because you have a sample of Floyd Mayweather's blood, but as far as I know, you don't have any of Manny Pacquiao's blood. If Pacquiao was using any uh, performance-enhancing drugs, would you be able to detect that? You know, that six-month window is a window that we're, we're certain based on science and metabolism and the lasting effects of the drugs, that if you had a six-month window, there wouldn't be any reasonable way someone could cheat and benefit athletically from it. You start getting within that six-month window, three months, eight weeks, you know, you're narrowing it. The logical choices you're not going to be able to get a benefit from and, and get away with, but there are certainly things out there that athletes have developed or gotten their hands on that would allow them to get that sort of benefit if you don't have the full six-month window. Now, if you allow me a fat follow-up, so then theoretically, if Manny Pacquiao was using a human growth hormone or EPO all the way up to November 2009 and you started testing him this summer, uh, anything before this summer could theoretically have been cleared through his system. But the benefit, you got to ask yourself the benefit. I mean, if you stop doing cycles of human growth hormone six months later, three months later, maybe eight weeks later, you're not going to get the benefit of it anymore. It's both the combination of the ability to detect it as well as if you can't detect it, is it going to do you any good by the time the match comes around? And, and it's just depending on which drug you're talking about, how many cycles a guy's been doing, you know, everything else combined with it, it's going to be really hard, I think, to get a benefit from seeing some normal athletically driven HGH use three months out if you're off the cycle for three months. I think from a business perspective and, and a boxing perspective, we think Manny Pacquiao might have benefited because he had this historic rise and might have benefited in his past bouts to get himself in this position. And then, of course, he wouldn't benefit against Mayweather, but, you know, he benefited his uh, bank account pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, guys, it's also been falsely reported, and it's unfortunate whether it's agenda-driven journalism or just lazy journalism that people don't give us an opportunity to give accurate facts. Instead, they write things based on what they hear or what someone who doesn't know what they're talking about says, um, or there's just an, a, a flat-out agenda, and, and that's fine. So, you know, it's one of the reasons I appreciate the opportunity to come on your program is to get the, the, the real information out there. I think every athlete, whether they're born in the U.S. or born elsewhere, is entitled to the presumption of innocence. They are innocent unless and until proven guilty. The, the obvious question comes up, well, what, what are the reasons why someone wouldn't want to participate in the, in the most effective anti-doping program available? And, and there's maybe three logical reasons, right? You're unfamiliar with it and you don't understand it. Okay, that's, that makes a lot of sense. And blood and urine, that sounds awfully invasive and intrusive. So maybe you just need to get comfortable with it. And millions of athletes around the world in the Olympic movement 
from the highest professional level down to you know weekend warrior badminton table tennis players have all gotten comfortable with it you know two the inconvenience isn't worth it and okay it's a mild inconvenience i mean i've said it before so is getting up early to train and so is getting punched in the face i mean those are those are inconveniences that come along with the sport the, the third is because you have something to hide those are the three and i think the only three reasons why you wouldn't want to participate if you truly value clean sport and so that's i think the the analysis of the debate. I just hope whether it's, you know, a Manny Pacquiao, whether it's any other boxer, whether it's any MMA fighter, any professional baseball player, any Olympic athlete, before they flat out reject a program, they at least get comfortable with it, at least understand it, have demonstrations of it, get knowledgeable and educated about it, and then ask themselves, do they really truly value, you know, clean sport or not? And, and there is an inconvenience. No question about it. There is a small call. It's peanuts compared to the money that's being made in some of these bouts, right, particularly by the fighters themselves. So at the end of the day, I, I think once all those hurdles are overcome, we've yet to see an athlete in the Olympic movement walk away from a competition or join another league because they were upset by the inconvenience of it. And it's, like I said, a, a very mild inconvenience. It's well worth the inconvenience if you truly want to have a level playing field and a drug-free safe sport. That definitely makes sense. Uh, you know, I had another question for you in regards to the blood and the urine testing. Let's say, just to bring it up, your company was forced to utilize only urine testing leading up yeah, to it. Yeah, we wouldn't a... do it. We, and we told them that that was an option, I guess, early on. And, and we just said, look, we're, we won't be involved, you know. We'll help you know, Nevada State Athletic Commission or the Texas Athletic Commission or the Los Angeles Athletic, we're happy behind the scenes telling them you ought to be doing X, Y, and Z, but if you have a flat out no blood testing or no EPO testing or no CIR, we're not going to be involved. And, and that's fine. We don't, you know, this isn't about us. I mean, I, I gave numbers to other companies to both Nevada and both boxers camps and said look guys if you want to have that kind of if you want to have a, a lesser program that's that's fine by us we don't it's sitting about us this is about doing the best you can do to have the most effective program in place and and i'm happy if you engage those companies i'm happy on a pro bono level to help you understand the pitfalls or the holes and how someone could cheat or not cheat given these programs floyd mayweather is uh there, there's some controversy out there that he may use some sort of numbing agents uh in his uh, in his hands that he might take injections uh to uh, numb his hands in the weeks and days leading up to fights uh, due to his history of having brittle hands is xylocaine or any other numbing agent uh, of that nature illegal under the united states anti-doping agencies a test regimen yeah we um we were asked about that i think originally by the camp themselves because they wanted to make sure you know part of the program was we sat down with each fighter, both Mosley and Mayweather, as well as their camps, and, and showed them the prohibited substance list. We walked through the rights and responsibilities and the procedures and the consequences and all that in, in order for them to be fully informed about the program. And at that point, we talked to them about any medications or other supplements or whatever else they were using. And I think it was at that point they asked us that first question, but I know later there had been some media questions about it. And I, and I can't remember the specific substance. Um, I think it was the one you just mentioned, but that's not a prohibited substance. And under the World Anti-Doping Code and the World Prohibited Substance List, which applies to millions of athletes around the world, that is not a prohibited substance, meaning it's not performance enhancing, it doesn't violate the spirit of sport, and it doesn't cause any safety or healthy concerns to any other athletes. So it's clearly not prohibited, and its use is fine under the rules upon which we operate. I don't know if you're even able to speak on this. Is that a testament to the fact that Floyd, in fact, does use this xylocaine substance to, uh, I guess, as a numbing, numbing agent for his hands? Yeah.